So this is my first summer I'm spending in Italy, and that means, well, let me show you something. That's our friend Johnny's vegetable garden. Almost all of the food that we eat here in this Italian village is grown in little gardens like this all just around here. Super, super local. And that also means that the ingredients are very, very seasonal. You eat artichokes when they're in season. You eat tomatoes when they're in season. You eat oranges when they're in season. This means that the recipes they cook is highly seasonal too. I normally come here in the winter and you're eating heavy winter food, so lasagna and ragu and meatballs, stuff like that. So now that I'm spending my first summer here, I'm experiencing a whole new world of food that I didn't even know existed. Food that is light and fresh and perfect for a hot summer day. Well, okay, today it's admittedly gray, but this seasonality also applies to pasta, which is why today I've asked Eva to share some pasta recipes that Italians only eat in the summer. The first summer pasta is a very interesting pasta because the sauce is completely raw. You're not gonna cook any of this? No, I will cook just the pasta because you can't eat the pasta raw. Speaking of which, this is kind of an interesting pasta mix. It's got all different kinds of shapes in it. I know, traditionally spaghetti are used, but when I went to the grocery shop and I saw this amazing pasta, I said, why not? Because the sauce is completely raw, one of the most important thing is that all your ingredients are very good ingredients. First of all, the tomatoes, they need to be good, sweet, and uh, ripe. 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 They should be in season. So this pasta you can't do in January, <laughs> except if you are in Australia, because if you are in Australia in January, you have very good tomatoes. What kind of tomatoes are these? These are piccadilly. Now, if you don't find piccadilly, you can use cherry tomatoes. You can use also the Samarzano tomatoes, why not? You can use the Roma tomatoes. The important is that they are ripe, in season tomatoes. Second ingredient is a very good mozzarella. Now, if you can find the mozzarella, you can also use cacciotta. If, I'm sorry, if you can't find mozzarella, one of the most common che cheeses, just use cacciotta. Yes, okay, if you can't find cacciotta, use mozzarella. If you can't find mozzarella, use cacciotta. I'm giving you two choices. <laughs> and I think yes. I know which is more likely for most people. Okay, use a very good mozzarella. So I take it mozzarella is in general more of a summer cheese. Like I feel like I've noticed people eating a lot less aged cheeses here. Yes, Arper, because also the aged cheese, uh, they have their own uh, season. They are ready usually during uh, October or November. It's a cheese for a winter time. You don't want in summer to eat a hard pecorino. You want something fresh, something light. And now we are going to season our sauce. And we are going to season our sauce with salt. Black pepper. I'm in Calabria. I'm in summer. I can't skip summer again. And last but not least, maybe the most important ingredient, which is a very good olive oil. And that's a very good olive oil made by our friend Giovanni, who also is the local cheese maker. Should I show them how much we bought of it? That much. It's a lot. It's that good. So that's the sauce. It's done. See, si, Arpel. It's done. Now, is the idea that when you mix the pasta in, that the cheese will melt? Just a little bit, Arpel. Okay. A little bit. I'm curious how this will come out. 
I don't know if I've ever had a raw pasta sauce. Oh, pesto. Pesto, I guess. I'm going to add also some Parmigiano cheese. I thought we were just talking about how aged cheeses are not a summer thing. Parmigiano is not an aged cheese. Parmigiano is a state of mind. This is really unlike any other plate of pasta you've ever put in front of me. Arpel, this is called pasta alla checca, and it's traditional from the area around Rome. And it's a summer pasta because it's made with good tomatoes that they are in season just in summer, and the sauce is raw, so you don't have to sweat in front of the fire and all this. <laughs> just the time to cook the pasta. You're right. The the mozzarella like just barely melted a little bit and it sort of i think coated the pasta and a little bit of creamy mozzarella goodness bon bon appetito. Appetito. Ooh. you can taste the summer when you eat this pasta think it's not day you don't want a carbonara you don't want a matriciana but you want something that is good but light at the same time and this is perfect if you used basil instead of oregano, it would be kind of like a caprese, caprese salad pasta. Actually, there are also some other versions that you can make. For example, you can add the basil, you can add also some good onion. Because don't forget, this is a pasta that uses what the farmers add in season. The end result surprises me a little bit because I thought it would end up kind of cold or kind of like a, you know, soggy pasta salad, but even just a little bit of pasta water and then the hot pasta itself, it just makes this lovely, gooey, cheesy sauce. And the tomatoes have that raw, fresh taste, but not in that kind of cold, Salad. Way. Yeah, yeah, it's, salad not, way. it's not a salad, yeah. It's uh, a pasta with a raw sauce. <laughs> also because you know I don't like pasta salad. <laughs> I know you don't like pasta salad. <laughs> so are these raw pasta sauces a common thing in summer? Is it specifically this dish? No, Arpir, we have several of them. And I'm going to show you another one. In this case, as you can see, we don't have any ingredients that is uh, particularly a summer ingredient. But this is a summer pasta dish because also here the sauce is completely raw. And we don't want to eat a raw sauce in winter when we, when we need something to keep us uh, warm. That's when you want the lasagna. That's when you want the lasagna, pasta al forno, risotto, minestrone, taglia della ragù, carbonara, matriciana, and I can keep going forever. So I see parsley, capers, olives, lemon, and tuna. This is one of the best canned tuna that you can find in all over the world. And it's made here at maybe 30 kilometers far from here, and there is a big tradition of canned tuna here in Calabria. Although technically that's jarred tuna, but we'll forget that for now. To yes, because you can see how good is the tuna. Wow, but like speaking of fresh ingredients, I have never smelled parsley that, that strongly. So Holy moly. I can smell that from here. I know, it has a wonderful perfume. Wow. I know. It's very important that when you can buy, when you go and buy canned tuna, 
The first thing is tuna in olive oil and pre pre prefer pre preferably in a jar because actually you can really see the quality of the tuna that you are going to eat. It's a good olive oil. You see how pink is this tuna? Yeah, that's not chicken of the sea. No, this is good tuna fish. This is fish. I, I hate repeating myself, but also that lemon. <laughs> <laughs> it smells like a lemon. It smells so strongly of lemon. This lemon is a lemon from my dad's garden and it's completely organic because my dad doesn't take care of the trees. So they grow because they want to grow. Uh, amazing. These are also the perfect lemon to make a very good limoncello. And maybe let us know if you want us to make a good limoncello while we are here in Italy and have this amazing fruit. Now you add the mayonnaise, right? In this case, I'm going to use spaghetti, but I'm going to use not the normal size of spaghetti. I'm going to use the big one. Spaghetti grossi. Yes, means uh, thicker spaghetti. Uh, you can find them under, under the name of spaghetti grossi, vermicelli, spaghettoni, they are all the same. And because the sauce is already done, all we have to do is wait for the pasta to cook. While we wait, a quick word about today's video sponsor. Traveling here to Italy is always full of surprises. Some of them are amazing, like discovering new pasta dishes I didn't even know existed. It's very good. Huh? That's very good. I know. Some of them are not so amazing, like getting here and realizing that my entire Netflix queue is empty. You may not know this, but streaming services have different catalogs in different countries. A movie that's available back home in the US is not necessarily available in Italy. But thanks to today's video sponsor, NordVPN, you can not only get around this, you can actually have a better streaming experience no matter where you live. NordVPN not only helps protect your internet traffic by hiding your location, you can actually, with the click of a button, change your location to wherever you want. So I can log on to Netflix, seemingly through the United States, and have all my queue of movies that I wanted to watch available again. It gets better though, because you can jump all around the planet and get access to those streaming content libraries in all different countries. I do this all the time, and I find amazing stuff to watch. If you sign up for a two-year plan using the link in the description below, that's NordVPN com slash pasta grammar, you will get an extra month free. It's totally risk-free because Nord has a 30-day money-back guarantee. A big thank you to NordVPN for allowing me to watch my content uninterrupted and for sponsoring today's video. In the past, I would not have been very excited to try this pasta because I always thought that I hated canned tuna. Now I have learned, ever since you made the, the real spaghetti alla bolognese, which uses tuna, I am a total convert. If you find really good canned tuna, it is amazing. Find a really good canned tuna is fundamental to make pasta with tuna fish, otherwise just skip. <laughs> what you have uh, usually in America, I don't remember the brand. There are a bunch, but yeah, if you get the ones that are like underwater and it's just this pulpy mash of poor quality fish. Forget. Eh. Eat aglio olio e peperoncino. <laughs> but if you have a good tuna fish uh, at pasta with this, it's very, very good. Buon appetito. Oh. Oh. Okay.
Yeah, I can see why this is a summer pasta. The, the juice lemon and also the zest makes it very fresh in your mouth. It's also important to point out, Harper, that I didn't add any salt to the sauce. Because uh. with the olives, the capers, the, the tuna fish, they are already enough salty. Mm -hmm. So in this case, you salt the pasta, but you don't salt the sauce. Oh, okay. You can also add a little bit of spicy pepper Ooh. to make it uh, a little bit more... Uh, Calabrian. Calabrian. I like this definition, to make a pasta a little bit more Calabrian. Is there a season when Calabrians don't eat spicy pepper? Never. <laughs> That's an all year thing. That was another delicious example of a raw pasta sauce. Do you have any summer pastas that you actually cook, though? After, yes, we have cooked pasta sauce during summer. That usually we do when we have the air conditioning. And I'm going to show you one. We don't have air conditioning here. Here we don't need the air conditioning. We don't need the air conditioning. It's a big stone building. Here the temperature is always the same. Winter <laughs> and summer, perfect for sauce. Maybe we need some lasagna. <laughs> Maybe, yes, to keep us warm. Okay, I already like this pasta. Because the ricotta cheese is involved. Yes. And we sure that is a good ricotta cheese, preferably... Blah, preferablemente sheep ricotta. Then, if you can't find the sheep ricotta, use cow ricotta, but it needs to be good. Ricotta, tomatoes, parmigiano, say no more. Do you need all of this ricotta, or can we afford a small bite? Bad try, Tarpe. Oh, goodness. Yep, that'll do. Smell of summer. This is done. We can turn off the heat. Penne liche. Yes, Harper, because I start my new war in favor of penne liche. I love penne liche. They are an amazing pasta. For those who aren't aware, Penne liche or penoni liche is like penne but without the the stripes and uh, it's like every Italian's least favorite pasta. Actually, this is the original penne pasta and it's still the best. Ah, the old summer pasta bowl. I'm starting to learn your tricks. See, I need to steal this from my mom. I bring it with me to America. It's perfect for pasta. minutes. The pasta is almost done and I'm going to reheat the tomatoes a little bit because I need to mix the pasta with the tomatoes. Ricotta and tomato pasta summer version. It's kind of like pasta allo scarpariello, 
which is one of my favorite pastas, plus ricotta. Plus penelisha. <laughs> because what makes the difference in this pasta, <laughs> plato pasta, is penelisha. There were actual memes during the pandemic in Italy about how penelisha was the only pasta that didn't completely empty out of the shelves. What is the best? It's one of the best, and I don't understand why. We need all friends of penelisha. We need to make like a, a sort of revolution all together. Genovese sauce with penelisha, pasta chickpeas with penelisha. Penelisha everything. Buon appetito. No, it's better than I thought. I have nothing bad to say against penelisha. The ricotta goes inside. They are smooth, but you can see that they keep the ricotta. Yeah. So outside and inside, it's full of ricotta. They are smooth when you put it in your mouth. It's like, wow. Definitely a great summer dish. This is one where you need really good tomatoes. And tomatoes are in season, not just in summer. So skip to do this in January when your tomatoes are just a bite of acid, acidic acid in your mouth. Start to do this during summer when they are at the top. Yeah, so now this pasta is addicted. Addictive. Danny. Addictive. I'm addicted to it because it is addictive. Bravo. Speaking of summer dishes, summer dishes that I'm addicted to, one of my favorites is caponata di melanzane, caponata siciliana. Caponata di melanzana alla siciliana. That's the one. And shout out to pasta grammarian Jeff, who made an amazing looking caponata. Jeff. We want it when we come back. We will go and ring the bell. <laughs> searching for caponata, searching for caponata. If you want to become a pasta grammarian, just hit that subscribe button. Follow us on social media at Pasta Grammar. And if you try any of these summer pasta recipes, tag us in a picture there. We'd love to see what you come up with. All right, guys, we'll see you next time. Ciao. Ciao. If a spring pasta is called pasta primavera, would you call a summer pasta just like Pasta estate? It sounds dumb. It's Is dumb. it as dumb as it sounds in my mind? It's dumb, Alberto. What would you call it? We don't actually have a name. But pasta primavera is not because of the season, it's because it's colorful.